the midnight highway stretched out like an endless dark serpent. Even in the headlights reach, the road seemed to swallow up the light, creating a sense that the pavement was drawing all who traveled it into some unknown nightmarish pit. This was Route 491, the highway with a cursed reputation. Once dubbed Devil's Highway, it had seen so much blood, tragedy, and terror that even changing the number hadn't rid it of the horrors that lurked along its path. Those who knew its stories stayed away after sunset. But not everyone had that choice. Mark was one such unlucky soul. A long-haul trucker, he was on his third run of the week, hauling goods from one coast to another, his eyes heavy with exhaustion. He'd driven through a few bad storms, but tonight was different. The air was thick with fog, swallowing up every sound, and he couldn't shake the feeling that he wasn't alone. Every so often, he'd see something, shapes moving in the mist just beyond his headlights. Were they animals? Shadows? Or was his tired mind playing tricks on him? He kept his window cracked, the crisp night air biting at his skin, hoping it would wake him up. Yet each mile he covered only intensified his unease. The darkness grew heavier, thicker, like ink spilling over everything. His fingers drummed on the steering wheel as he tried to keep his focus. But it was getting harder. Fatigue was sinking in and the road was turning into a blurred haze. Then it happened. Out of nowhere, a hitchhiker appeared on the side of the road. He was tall, wearing a tattered coat that hung down to his knees. His face was hidden beneath the brim of a hat, and his head was tilted down, almost as if he was staring right at the ground. Mark felt an urge to keep driving, to pretend he hadn't seen anything. But as he passed, his headlights illuminated the hitchhiker's face for a split second. It was lifeless, eyes sunken, skin pale, mouth twisted in a strange half-grin. Against every instinct screaming in his head, Mark found his foot pressing down on the brake. His truck lurched to a stop, and the sound of the engine hummed in the dead silence. He looked in his rearview mirror, but the hitchhiker was gone. Not a shadow, not a trace, just empty roads stretching out behind him. He took a deep breath and tried to shake off the unease. But as he started moving again, he felt it. A presence in the cab like someone had climbed into the passenger seat. His heart raced, his skin prickling with dread, but he couldn't bring himself to turn his head. Then he heard it. A faint whisper, so soft he could barely make out the words. Are you afraid of the dark? He froze, gripping the wheel so hard his knuckles turned white. The voice was barely more than a breath, yet it echoed in his head. Cold sweat trickled down his back. He stole a glance to the passenger side, but no one was there. Just an empty seat. The truck began to shudder, lights flickering on the dashboard as if something had drained its energy. The radio crackled to life without him touching it, emitting low, haunting static. A voice garbled through, crackling and broken, repeating over and over, no escape, no escape, no escape. Mark's fingers fumbled over the radio dials, trying to turn it off, but the static persisted. He felt a chill creep up his spine, colder than anything he'd ever felt. Glancing in the rearview mirror, he saw something that turned his blood to ice. A pair of eyes stared back at him. Sunken, hollow, and glowing with a sickly green light, the hitchhiker was sitting in his back seat, staring at him with that twisted grin, his hands resting on the seat backs. Mark's heart thundered as he slammed his foot on the gas, desperate to outrun whatever this thing was. The truck roared down the highway, but every time he glanced in the mirror, the hitchhiker was still there, his grin wider, his eyes unblinking, locked onto Mark. No matter how fast he went, no matter how many miles he put between them, that thing stayed right behind him, a constant reminder that he was never truly alone on the highway. Then, just as suddenly as it began, everything stopped. The radio went silent, the lights returned to normal, and when Mark dared to look in the mirror again, the hitchhiker was gone. He exhaled a breath he hadn't realized he was holding and pulled over to the side of the road, his hands shaking uncontrollably. He sat there in silence, trying to convince himself it was all a hallucination, a trick of exhaustion. But as he leaned back, something fell from the passenger seat, a worn old hat. He stared at it, heart hammering in his chest. He didn't remember seeing it there before, and yet somehow it felt like it had always been with him. With trembling fingers, he picked it up, feeling the coarse fabric and the cold, lingering chill that clung to it. As he turned the hat over, he noticed something scrawled inside, almost as if it had been carved into the fabric. It read, See you on the road. 
He felt a jolt of terror, his instincts screaming that the hitchhiker would come back. Maybe not tonight, maybe not next week, but someday, when he least expected it. Every shadow on the road, every bump, every flicker in his mirrors felt like a harbinger of that cold, haunting presence. From that night on, every mile he drove felt different, heavier, as if he wasn't just hauling cargo, but carrying the weight of a dark passenger who would never truly let him go. And he knew, deep down, that as long as he kept driving those lonely highways, he'd never truly be alone again. There's a stretch of road that truckers call Dead Man's Hollow. It's not on any map, and no one seems to know exactly where it starts or ends. The few who've heard of it whisper stories, chilling accounts of strange things on that lonely highway, stories that keep most off those dark, winding roads at night. But one rainy October night, Danny, a trucker with a reputation for laughing off ghost stories, found himself bound to cross it. The rain was relentless, drumming on his windshield and blurring the edges of the narrow road. His headlights barely cut through the mist swirling across the pavement, and he was alone, the only light cutting through the empty blackness. Danny was only a few hours from his destination, and he figured he'd get a cup of coffee, maybe stop for a nap somewhere safe before continuing. As he rounded a curve, something caught his eye. Someone, actually. A woman in a red dress stood on the shoulder, soaked from the rain. She seemed out of place, a jarring splash of color against the bleak gray world. She didn't wave, didn't make any attempt to flag him down, just stood there, staring off into the distance. Against his better judgment, Danny slowed down. Something about her was wrong. But he couldn't just leave her stranded, he thought. Rain be damned. As he came to a stop, she turned her head. Her eyes met his, and Danny felt a strange chill seize him. Her face was pale, almost too pale, and her expression empty. No relief, no desperation, just blank. Slowly, she walked over, climbing into the passenger seat without a word. Her skin was icy, and Danny noticed a peculiar scent, wet earth, old wood, something ancient and decayed. He cleared his throat, trying to lighten the tension. Got caught in the rain, huh? The woman only looked at him, her eyes distant, dark. She whispered softly, keep driving. Danny felt an uncomfortable tightness grip his chest, but he obeyed the tires splashing through puddles as they rolled deeper into Dead Man's Hollow. His fingers trembled slightly as he tried to shake off the feeling of unease settling over him like a heavy blanket. He glanced at her out of the corner of his eye, wondering if he should ask where she was headed. But something about her presence made him feel... trapped. A strange fog drifted across the road, twisting into shapes in his headlights, twisting, bending forming outlines of faces, hands, mouths, all stretching and clawing through the mist. Danny blinked, convinced his tired eyes were playing tricks on him. But as he glanced over at the woman, he saw her lips curl into a faint smile. Dead man's hollow, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the rain. They call it that for a reason, you know. The truck lurched, the engine sputtering. Danny swore under his breath as he tried to keep control. He glanced down, thinking he must have hit something but the road was empty. Then he heard it, a low, hollow moan that seemed to rise from beneath them, an agonized wail that sent icy needles through his veins. He looked down at the fuel gauge, which was flickering erratically, dancing from full to empty and back again. Panic clawed at him as he gripped the wheel tighter, eyes locked on the road, refusing to look at her. What's, what's going on? He finally managed, his voice betraying the fear gripping his heart. She leaned closer, her voice a whisper in his ear. They don't like strangers here, Danny. He froze. He'd never told her his name. The truck's lights flickered, the dashboard flashing, and the engine rattled as if something or something or someone was tearing it apart from the inside. And then he saw them. Shadows in the fog, faces with hollow eyes, twisted mouths, watching him. They stood on the side of the road in the middle of the street, hands outstretched, eyes locked on him with a ravenous intensity. He tried to look away, but it was as if the shadows had crawled into his mind, his vision blurring and splitting as they seemed to multiply, to draw closer. He couldn't think, couldn't breathe. The woman turned to him, her face twisted into something grotesque, her mouth stretching far too wide, a grin that showed rows of blackened, sharpened teeth. They're waiting for you, Danny. They've been waiting for a long, long time. The truck began to slow as if invisible hands were dragging it down. 
Danny's hands gripped the wheel, his knuckles white, his breath shallow and rapid as the shadows pressed in closer. The faces in the mist were clearer now, men, women, children, all with sunken eyes, skin pale and bruised, each of them marked by some hint of violence. They stared at him, reaching, their fingers clawing at the cab's windows, scraping, pressing in. He couldn't look away from them, each face more horrific than the last, their voices echoing, overlapping, a cacophony of whispers and groans. And in that dreadful chorus, one voice rose above the others, piercing through the madness. It was the woman's, soft and sickly sweet. You belong here now, he screamed, his voice lost in the sound of the engine roaring as he slammed his foot on the gas, desperate to get away, to escape this nightmare. But the truck didn't move. The wheels spun, the engine groaned, but it was as if he were stuck in place, held by an invisible force. Then he felt it, a cold hand on his shoulder. He looked up, meeting the gaze of the woman who no longer looked human. Her skin was peeling, her eyes black pits, and her mouth twisted into a grin too wide for her face. Welcome home. In an instant, the darkness swallowed him and everything went silent. The next morning, police found Danny's truck on the side of Dead Man's Hollow. The cab was empty and there was no sign of him, just an eerie silence lingering around the vehicle. They combed the area, searching for hours, but all they found was his truck, and a faint, sickly sweet scent of decayed earth lingering in the air. Danny was never seen again, but those who drive down that stretch of road sometimes swear they catch a glimpse of him in the fog, his eyes wide with terror, his hand pressed against the glass, forever trying to escape. They say if you're on that road at night and you see a woman in a red dress, don't stop. Don't look at her, don't acknowledge her, and whatever you do, keep driving. Because if you don't, Dead Man's Hollow may just claim you as its next lost soul. There's an old highway in the middle of nowhere that people call the Never Road. It doesn't appear on any map and it never seems to look the same twice. Folks around town say it has a way of pulling you in, especially when you're alone and looking for a shortcut. This is exactly what happened to Sarah on a late night drive back to her college dorm. She was already hours behind schedule, having taken a wrong turn on her way home after a long holiday weekend. Exhausted and frustrated, she nearly missed the small signpost pointing down an offbeat road she hadn't noticed before. The road looked rough and narrow, shrouded by trees that clawed toward the sky, but her GPS claimed it would shave an hour off her trip. With a sigh, Sarah decided it was worth a shot. As she turned onto the road, the light from her headlights seemed to dim, swallowed up by the thick hanging mist. The darkness was absolute. The trees on either side bent inward, their twisted branches forming skeletal arms that stretched over her car like a tunnel of gnarled bones. The only sound was the crunch of gravel beneath her tires. But as Sarah drove on, she realized something was wrong. The road stretched on endlessly, with no signs, no intersections, no houses, just an endless line of trees in that choking mist. She glanced at her GPS, but it showed nothing but a blank gray screen. Her stomach twisted. She'd been driving for well over an hour, yet the clock on her dashboard hadn't moved a single minute. It was as if time itself had stopped. Her phone had no signal, and any attempts to turn back seemed to lead her further into that maze of fog and darkness. The road seemed to twist and curve, but she never felt like she was getting anywhere. The thought made her stomach lurch with a creeping dread. She tried to calm herself, but her mind kept churning with questions, each more unnerving than the last. How long had she really been driving? Where was she? What if she never found her way out? After what felt like hours, she spotted a faint light flickering up ahead. Relief washed over her. Someone else was on the road. She sped up, chasing the light, but the closer she got, the fainter it became, almost as if it was pulling away. She finally caught up and her stomach dropped when she saw it was a single, rusted street lamp standing crooked by the side of the road. Beneath it stood an old, decrepit house, its windows shattered, its door hanging off the hinges. It looked abandoned, like it hadn't seen life in decades. But she felt an odd pull, something drawing her to it, despite every fiber of her being screaming to stay away. Shaking, she left her car and took a hesitant step toward the house. The air was thick, colder than it should have been, and carried the scent of mold and decay. 
As she reached the front steps, she heard a faint sound like the creak of footsteps on rotting wood coming from inside. She froze, breath hitching. Then a light flickered on in the window, casting a dull glow over the porch. Hello, she called, her voice trembling, echoing into the emptiness. There was no answer. Just that light and the unnerving sense that someone or something was watching her. Swallowing hard, Sarah pushed open the door, which groaned as if in protest. The inside was worse than the outside. Dust coated every surface, broken furniture lay scattered across the floor, and dark stains spattered the walls. But that light kept burning, casting shadows that danced across the walls. She took another step, and her foot landed on something soft. Looking down, she saw a muddy, half-buried photograph lying among the dust. She picked it up, wiping away the grime, and, and nearly dropped it when she saw the image. It was a photo of herself, taken just hours before she'd started driving, looking into her car's rearview mirror with a faint smile. But something about her own eyes seemed wrong. They were dark, hollow, empty. A cold breath brushed her neck, and she felt the distinct sense that she was no longer alone. Heart pounding, she spun around, but the room was empty. She backed up slowly, each step making the house creak as if it were alive, groaning in response. She reached the door, her fingers fumbling to find the handle in the dim light. But just as she turned to leave, she froze. Standing at the end of the hall, cloaked in shadow, was a figure. Its body was thin, almost skeletal, its head cocked to one side as it stared at her. She couldn't see its face, only the glint of dark, hungry eyes. Then it smiled, wide and unnatural, stretching across its gaunt face. Slowly, it lifted one bony finger and pointed directly at her, a silent invitation or a warning. She couldn't tell. In a blind panic, she threw herself through the doorway and ran to her car, her heart slamming against her ribs. She locked the doors, her breath coming in shallow gasps as she looked back toward the house. But the figure was gone. The light had vanished, and only darkness stared back at her. With a trembling hand, she started the engine, her mind racing as she sped away from the house, desperate to leave it behind. But as she looked in her rearview mirror, she saw a faint figure standing in the road, watching her, eyes glinting through the mist, that smile still wide and haunting. The road stretched on, and she felt a sinking dread that she might never escape. Her phone still had no signal, the clock still hadn't moved, and no matter how fast she drove, the endless twisting trees loomed over her, a relentless reminder that she was trapped. Hours, days, she couldn't tell how much time had passed. She'd fallen into a trance, her vision blurring as she drove. Then, out of nowhere, the mist lifted. Sunlight pierced through, bright and sudden, blinding her for a moment as she came to an abrupt stop. She was back on the main highway, the familiar exit sign glowing in the distance. Relief flooded through her, and she pulled off to the nearest gas station, her hands shaking, her body aching from fear and exhaustion. The attendant glanced at her, his eyes wide with shock. Ma'am, he said, you all right? You look like you've been through hell. Sarah nodded, still in a daze, and stumbled inside. But just as she pulled out her wallet, something fell from her bag. She looked down and felt her blood run cold. It was the photograph of herself, the same one she'd found in that house, smeared with dirt and grime. And on the back, in a faint scrawl that hadn't been there before, were the words, See you soon. Sarah fled from that station and never spoke of it to anyone. But every now and then, she swears she sees the figure in her rearview mirror, standing in the shadows of the road, waiting. And she knows one day, when she least expects it, she'll find herself on the never road again. And this time, she won't escape.